once again feel like this is a little crooked. I had mm, a bit of an emotional breakdown at 3 a.m. the other day and cut my bangs. So um, I'm convincing myself that I really love them. But they are, they're, they're here. It is what it is. In better news, it is my favorite season that I feel like just goes by in like two weeks. Okay, the leaves has not started to change yet here. It does not feel like fall. It was like 90 degrees today, but it's fine. Okay, we're getting into the fall vibes. I am manifesting it and I am manifesting long fall. If I could live somewhere where it was perpetually in like the middle of fall with all of the leaves just changing colors and falling, that would be a vibe. So we're gonna do that through talking about the books that I wanna read this fall. If you have been to this channel before, you will know that uh, when I say a TBR, okay, it's more of a casual suggestion to myself. We will not be holding me to this, okay? I just wanna talk about some of the books that give me fall vibes for a very specific reason. I think I have like four categories of fall vibes that we're gonna go over. And the books that I, I do wanna read, we'll see if we get to them. For this TBR, we have Spooky, Witchy, Fantasy, and Cozy. Let's do this. Oh, hi. I'm Lexa. Also, I really wanted to get a drink that was like giving fall vibes, but then it was so hot that the idea of drinking a hot drink and the idea of drinking anything but like a refreshing pink drink, it wasn't happening for us friends. First book that I wanna read that gives me the spooky vibes is Ninth House. I have been wanting to read this for forever. Six of Crows is like, it was one of my favorite series of all time. I'm a little scared to reread it because I don't want it to lose its magic. So instead, Shadow and Bone didn't work for me. So I'm gonna try Ninth House. I love horror and I love specifically like adult gothic-y horror and in this we're following Alex Stern I believe who is going to like Yale or some yep yeah yeah and I think she can like see ghosts so she like starts a club there or she's like needed in their secret society or something like that and then it gets dark and witchy. Uh, you will see a theme throughout here that I don't tend to read synopses of books. I go off vibes and recommendations and like maybe the first few sentences. So listen, we are not going to be here for the most succinct synopses of books that I haven't read because that is not, that's not my forte. However, I will hopefully provide you some entertainment and tell you why I want to read these books. And I just scratched myself in the face. Can you see that? You can see my foundation. I bought this book and I was so excited to find it because I found it for like $8 back when Hellbent came out and you could not find the hardcover to this book anywhere. And then I found it for $8 and then I didn't read it. Sounds about right. A world of shady drug dealer boyfriends, dead end jobs, and much, much worse. We've got secret societies. We've got possibly haunty, ghosty, magical things, dark academia vibes, and Leigh Bardugo. I'm very excited about this one. Next is Horrid by Katrina Leno. I know nothing about this book at all. Not a single thing. Oh my God, it's even, this even takes place in the fall. The cold New England autumn arrives. Perfect. So it seems like we're following Jane who after her father dies, her and her mom move back to like her childhood home in the cold New England autumn. And I think that this is one of those horror books, it's YA and I think it's one of those that it's like, is there creepy supernatural fantasy things happening? Is it mental illness? Is it grief? Is it a little bit of all of the above? Uh, this back little Jane's fingers were numb. Was she ready to admit now that she believed in? Da, da, da. The word was still so hard to say. It was silly and childish. It was white sheets with eye holes cut out and grainy pictures of disembodied heads and bumps in the night when you're home alone, all tucked in bed and frozen with fear. I have read one other book from her. I really liked it. Usually I think the vibe of her books is like real world with a little bit of something, something uh, extra going on here. If nothing else, this cover, it is the vibe. I actually don't know if these next two books are like spooky, but they don't really fit into any other category. So we're just gonna throw them in here, okay? We're just gonna go with it. The first one is Seasonal Fears by Shauna McGuire. Listen, Middle Game, one of my favorite books of all time. Absolutely love it. One of my favorite first sentences of a book. This is the like sequel but not sequel to Middle Game that I have been a little, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, a little hesitant to read because I don't want it to ruin Middle Game for me. And I hear so many people say that this was really disappointing because the vibes were just very different. And this isn't actually a direct sequel. It is, so the first sequel we're following, Roger and Daughter, twins. I don't know how else to describe other than just I love that book, you should read it. If you're down for like weird and a good time. This I believe we follow different characters, like a different set of twins. Melanie and Harry, what kind of names are that? And I think they maybe control the seasons, possibly. 
but this I mean just gives me fall vibes and I I'm gonna read it I'm gonna be honest with you hopefully it won't I've had enough time since I've read middle game that hopefully even if I don't like this I can keep the two separate but I've heard from some people that they didn't like that this wasn't a direct sequel and it wasn't following the characters that we loved then I've heard from other people that this like included too much of Roger and Dodger and some of the other characters so I I don't know all I know is that in my eyes, Sean McGuire can do no wrong, and my goal is to just read everything that she has ever come out with, ever. So I'm going to have to take the leap and trust her on this one. For the longest time, I thought that this book was fantasy, and then recently I found out it's not. It's a thriller. And that is The Firekeeper's Daughter. I want to read this because I also want to read Warrior Girl Untamed. I guess we could unearth? That was not the name of this book. Warrior Girl Unearthed. But I did not realize that these weren't standalones. I think that this follows some of the characters from The Firekeeper's Daughter, so I have to read this one before I can read this one. I guess you could also include that on the list for this fall, but we're gonna keep things realistic here, okay? And we're just gonna stick to one. Our main character in here is an indigenous girl. Is she a teen? Is this teen? 18 year old. This is YA, literally says so on the, the front here. All that I really know about this is that I believe it's like a, not thriller, but like a mystery because she ends up somehow, I think she witnesses a murder and is, thrust into like an FBI investigation and maybe like has to go undercover for them. An electrifying thriller layered with a rich exploration of the modern native experience, a reckoning of current and his historical injustices, and a powerful celebration of community. Literally say no more. Getting back into the spooky vibes. Slewfoot by Brahm. I want to read this during the fall. This is on the top of my TBR. This is fall spooky vibes in a book. Absolutely gorgeous artwork. Hello? I hope you can see that. Why can I not speak today? Probably because I haven't slept in 72 hours. That would explain some things. In this I believe we have Abatha who is our main character who ends up teaming up with this like monster demon but like maybe he's not as like demony, demonic as everyone thinks that he is because they're both kind of like outcasts and they do something together. I'm doing such a fantastic job selling these books to you. Together they ignite a battle between pagan and puritan, one that threatens to destroy the entire village, leaving nothing but ashes and bloodshed in its wake. I found this on sale for five dollars. Stunning. I can't wait. And that's one that I've heard like nothing but incredible things from, from people who I share like similar spooky vibes. I think Kayla loved this. I think Katie loved this. And we usually agree on like horry spooky things. Then I have two books, both from the same author. I just said that I was going to try to just stick to one, but I couldn't decide. So it's probably, chances are I'm probably going to read one of these, but I'm going to decide which one. And uh, I don't know yet. So I want to talk about both. Okay. And that is the Hacienda by Isabel Cañas and Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. I just got this one and I love a good vampire book, but this one is like the one people, I mean, this, the other one's new and I've heard good things about it, but like this is the one people talk about that has haunted house, creepy vibes. I believe maybe, is this also the one where she like has a thing with a priest or is that Mexican Gothic? <laughs> it is, it is. So our main girl, her father died during the Mexican War of Independence. She gets this like proposal from this dude who everyone's like, um, his last wife died in some mysterious and very suspicious circumstances. Maybe you should be alarmed. And she's like, yeah, okay, but I need a place to live and I need some security because there's a lot going on here. So she's like, I'm gonna take him up as an offer. Thanks for the warning though. And then she gets there to the Hacienda and um, some spooky uh, things start happening and maybe she's like oh maybe people are right then i believe that she ends up like teaming up with a priest and maybe some things happen this i believe is her debut so i just feel like this is the first one that i should read but then i just ordered this one on book of the month because i was like oh i'm definitely gonna read this the month that it comes out and then i realized that i hadn't read the hacienda and then i was like okay maybe i should wait and now i still haven't read it but this is described as like a supernatural western western book between vampires and vaqueros, come on, come on. And Nana, whenever she was younger, I believe like escaped a vampire, she survived, but now maybe he's gonna come back for her while well, there's like a lot of other shit going down. Then I wanna read The Trees Crept In. And uh, this, I have no idea if it actually has fall vibes, but it has spooky vibes. And literally all I know about this book is that it is about one or two girls it's YA it's horror and literally the premise of it is that like they move into this house maybe it's like their grandma's old house and the trees keep getting closer and closer again does that tell you literally anything to help you make a decision about whether you want to read this book no but does that tell me all I need to know about whether I want to read this book 
Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Then I had to decide between what book I wanted to put at the top of my TBR from T. King Fisher because I just know that I do want to read a book from her. And I was thinking about Nettle and Bone. I was thinking about The House of Hollow or The Hollow, The Hollowed Places. House of Hollow, I think, is right there. I think it's the hollowed places. But I really think What Moves the Dead is gonna be at the top of my TBR. First off, this cover, absolutely stunning. Both covers of this book, I actually think I might like this cover the most. But Kindle was having a deal on this the other day and it was like 99 cents or something like that. Maybe I had a credit and it was like free. So I bought this on my Kindle. It is a novella that is a retelling of the house of the fall of the fall of the house of Usher. I know that this was a literally dead book club pick. I wanted to read it, but that month that it it was last year, whatever month it was. I think it was around this time last year. I was so busy, I was traveling a lot that I like barely, I don't even think I read anything. I think I read one book that month. So that didn't make the cut. Now I really wanna read it. And I believe that this is like a maybe body horror. I know we have a lot of fungal horror. We got mushrooms going on. And from the last few YA horror books that I've read that have had like body horror and things growing out of things, I would have thought that that would absolutely not be my vibe because that is the most terrifying. Thing to me ever but maybe that's why it works for me because it really it's got me wrapped around its finger we're running strong on this category okay it's just in general i want to read another book by darcy coates uh, here's the thing though okay i got into darcy coates at the wrong time i got into her whenever she was still on kindle unlimited and i have kindle unlimited so i was able to read these books and like just fly through them and enjoy the experience and not feel any pressure by them because they are just like a not fun, but kind of fun, like easy to read, typical what you would think of as like a haunted house story. That's what Darcy Coates kind of encapsulates. I read, I believe, two different books from her last year, The Haunting of Ashburn House and Gallows Hill. And I just like, normally that's not, like normally I'd like my horror to have a little bit more substance and weirdness and vagueness, but the just direct ghosty, we're haunted, things are happening, this is a fun time, it kind of reads like a thriller. So if you are a thriller reader, but you're wanting to get into horror, I would say Darcy Coates because it's just readable. It, it's so easy to consume. But however, she's no longer on Kindle Unlimited, which love, love that journey for her. But for me, I don't know if I'm willing to invest in these books that I know I'm only going to read once. I know I'm going to fly through them. And I don't even know if I'm going to like because I don't, I, I just pick up random ones that I hear about. And my library doesn't have the e cop like ebooks of them. So I'm going to try to see if I can find a couple at my library and like whichever one is available whenever I'm in that kind of mood is probably what I'm going to read if we're being honest here. But I just know that that straight up haunted house slash ghosty, ghosty haunted vibe is going to be what I need at some point, at least once during this fall. So I'm gonna be hitting up my local library for some Darcy Coats because I, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna spend $20 on a paperback. Not for a book that I know for sure. I'm gonna fly through, I'm not gonna care to tab and I'm never gonna reread. Now that we're done with spooky, let's get into witchy. I just have a few in this category, but there were enough that originally it was part of the spooky category. And then I was like, no, no, no. We need to highlight witchy books because if there's one thing that I love, it is women and specifically witches. The two that I own physically right now, which is, you'll see a theme that the majority of the books on my TBR are books that I have on my physical slash Kindle. Like I own them on Kindle because I'm really trying to get through some of my books before I start buying new ones. I was someone who was just like buying up anything that I had heard of. And now I'm starting to realize that maybe I want to be a little bit more, not conscious, because I think buy whatever books you want. But for me, I think the books that I want to spend my money on, I would rather invest and books that like really, really bring me joy to have the physical version of and read the rest of them on my Kindle, just because I, I really struggle with like my arms hurting since I work on my phone and on my computer all day and then holding a book that is just so much easier on my Kindle. So if I'm gonna own physical copies of books, I want them to be like for a specific reason, like whether I wanna tab it, highlight it, I want a physical copy because I loved it so much, that kind of vibe. Did you ask for that tangent? Absolutely not. But here we are. The two I own physically. First is The Nature of Witches. Clara is uh, a witch and in this world or version of reality, witches have been controlling like the weather or the seasons or the climate, all of the above. And lately something has gone awry and it's kind of a little bit out of control. They've lost control of the climate and storms are happening, things are happening, and it, it is going to fall on Clara to fix it. This just seems like one of these books like the font is pretty big. I think I could fly through this in like a day sitting at a coffee shop drinking a pumpkin spice latte or a chai and just live in my best witchy self. I also believe that the audiobook for this is on Scribd, so double awesome. I do think I've heard mixed reviews about this, but to be perfectly honest with you, other than like one of these books in this category, I think that 
kind of applies across the board. Like I've, I've heard people who love it and people who don't. And I tend to like witchy books, so I'm erring on the side that I'm going to be one of the girlies who loves this book. The next one that I am honestly most excited about is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This was already on the top of the things that I wanted to read, but then I read House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson last year. Absolutely loved it. I don't think I put that on. Did that make my favorite books of the year? If it didn't, that was incorrect. That was a bad choice on past Lex's part, part if it didn't. Because that book was so good and I just love Alexis Henderson's writing. So you put that with witches? Please say no more. Oh my god, and this was a debut? I believe she realizes that she's got like some dark powers lurking inside of her. Something happened with her mom. Even after reading the synopsis, that's literally all I can tell you about this book. I think this sums it up nicely. A young woman living in a rigid puritanical society discovers dark powers within herself in this stunning feminist fantasy debut. The next that I have on all my TBR literally for forever and I still have not gotten around to but I do own the ebook of it that is the once in future witches I have heard so many mixed things about this I think Kayla didn't like it I think Meg with books did it's long it's about women what is the point of this uh video if I can't explain any of the books to you I sat down and I was like making this list of books I wanted to read and I was like Lexa you should write down some key points about what this is about you should look up the synopses and then I was like no it's fine okay I can just go off of vibes I know kind of enough what these are all about I was really kidding myself there okay yes 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 okay okay this is jogging my memory now we got a group of sisters living in I believe Salem or like Salem New Salem where according to the government or the people which is no longer exist that used to be a thing okay but that's not a thing anymore bitch Okay, yeah, right. And I think that throughout this, they're all fighting like for their right to exist as they are, and also for the right to vote, our feminist suffragist movement and our feminist witchy movement. Love it. The only thing that I'm a little bit worried about this is how long it is. So hopefully I can get the audiobook from my library. Last, this is the only short story collection I think that I have on this list, and that is Toil and Trouble. I'm gonna be honest with you, I tried to read this before and I DNF'd it, but I have a tendency to DNF short story collections slash anthologies because I, I get distracted, I'm gonna be honest. And you read a story in one sitting, so there's not that like normal pull of a book where if I read 20 pages, I want to come back to it because I'm, I've only read 20 pages of a very long story. This, it feels complete every single time that I read a story. So it's hard for me to complete a short story collection as a whole. However, recently I read um, Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time. Absolutely incredible. So I think that this would be a good book to put on my TBR for if I'm doing like a reading vlog. Maybe I'll do like a witchy reading vlog. Hey, hey. That's a good idea. And then I could read like a, a couple stories a day. I don't know how many stories there are in there. Throughout like the week as I'm reading other things. And I remember liking it. I don't remember being blown away by it, but yet some, for some reason I wanna come back to it. That is it for our witchy books. Moving on to general fantasy that gives me fall, autumn vibes. But why? Not sure I could tell you on most of these, okay? If we're being honest here. The first that, I'm just gonna get the first one out of the way that I know for sure has no reason to give me fall vibes other than the fact that it is fall and I wanna read this book. And that is Divine Rivals. And let me tell you, I wanted to read this because I had seen a lot of people talking about it on TikTok. I believe that it's like a, a Kindle Unlimited TikTok girlies fave. Then I saw Reads with Rachel reading it, but I haven't watched the, I haven't watched her video yet because I wanted to read it first and for my own form my own opinion. If we're being honest here, which I feel like we can, right? We're on that level. The main reason that I want to read this is because as I was organizing my bookshelves the other day, I realized that I own not one, um, uh, excuse me, you're the most beautiful book that I own. Please stay up there. Um, I own not one, but two special edition copies of this book that I have not read yet. So I want to know if I like it to know if I like want to keep these or if I can go ahead and sell them and get rid of them. Because I have a feeling that so many people love this book that someone else would enjoy these more than I would if I end up not liking it. And what I don't want to happen is this to just sit on my shelves for forever. I never read the book. Then years down the road I get to it and then I realize I don't like it. Then And I own two freaking special edition versions of this. Which they're both stunning and they're both... Do either one of these give us fall vibes? No. But this is fantasy romance. I think something happened with like all the gods. Oh, we got rival journalists that have to face the depths of hell together? Oh, come on. Oh, and th no, there are gods. The gods are warring again. I got a feeling these two are gonna have to come in between that. Let's just 
I'm just gonna move you this way. How do you feel about that? I thought that I could argue with you about why this is giving me fall vibes. It's not, but this is another case of a book that I own two copies of now. A special edition and my book of the month, but that's fine. This is by Chloe Gong. I believe that this is her adult debut and it is fantasy and I thought that it was a standalone, but apparently it is not. I'm glad that I knew that before going into it. That has happened to me before. And it is inspired by Antony and Cleopatra. I don't know if it's like a retelling or if it just kind of has the vibes. I don't actually know anything about Antony and Cleopatra, so couldn't tell you. Hi, fantasy. We've got some sort of a trial or competition, and that is one of my favorite tropes in fantasy. And I actually haven't read any of Chloe Gong's books, but I've heard such good things, and I actually think Kayla really liked this. And since sometimes YA fantasy doesn't really work for me, I'm excited that she came out with an adult one because I think that this is going to be more of my vibe to read from her from. I may or may not have had this on my TBR since the beginning of the year, and I believe that it's one of the books that I put on my books, I, like 23 books I want to read in 2023 list. I honestly don't remember most of the books I put on that list. Do I think I've gotten to them? We shall see. I know that this was on it, and I know I still haven't read it because I've been so intimidated by it. And that's Babel, Babel by R.F. Kuang. I read the Poppy War trilogy. I loved the first one and then the series kind of went a little bit downhill for me from there. I feel like this is either going to be such a big win or it's going to be a little bit too high brow for me to fully comprehend. And I think that it's going to be something I have to be in the headspace for. And I've been saying that since the beginning of the year. Okay, I know, I know, but it's true. And I want to give this its best chance, but we've got Dark Academia vibes fantasy but I believe it's light fantasy and I just feel like the fall time is a great time we're starting to slow down we're spending a little bit more time inside chilling out in coffee shops getting getting over that like summer of go 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 so I think that this would be the season where I had the time to like really sit with this tab it take it in and enjoy it but we're talking about colonialism. I've heard it's very character based and that yes, there is fantasy, but that's not like, I believe that this book has footnotes. This one, I also need to get around to and that is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Shachki. I read, what was her series? The Gilded Wolves. I read the first book. I wasn't super impressed with it, but to be honest with you, I think I went in with the wrong expectations. I had like just read Six of Crows and then I heard it compared to Six of Crows. And I think that that comparison does that book a disservice. And it, at least for me, because I just gotten into reading. So I think in my mind, I had unfair expectations of that. This is more like adult. And I think that this could be more of my vibe. This is fantasy. Yes, but it's more like gothic, little bit of magic-y something, something, something going on. And that seems to be a trend here. I love high fantasy, especially high fantasy series. And I was thinking about including some of those on this list. But right now, I've just not been in the headspace to complete fantasy series. So I'm not going to set myself up for failure on that one. But maybe I'll come around and I'll end up reading some. But I was just feeling like that might be a little bit too much at this stage in my life. Even though they usually end up being my favorites. This says it's a comparison to Mexican Gothic and The Invisible Life of Audi LaRue, which I just read that and absolutely loved it. We got gothic -y vibes. We've got a marriage maybe kind of built upon secrets. And she's like, hey, okay, fine, I'll marry you. But like, you can't look into my past. But then something happens, I think, and then brings her back to like her childhood home. And there's some maybe spooky, gothic -y, haunted, maybe not haunted, just things happening there. This is why I don't even read synopsis because even after reading the synopsis twice, I still can't tell you what this is about. This is the special edition of it. Absolutely stunning. I've been recording for an hour and I said that this was gonna be a short video for me to record, but that's okay because we are on to the last cozy fantasy reads. I feel like this is my era of cozy fantasy. After I read The House in the Cerulean Sea, this is my vibe. I read so many dark, heavy things that I think that I could start to really enjoy balancing it out with some cozy fantasy. So these are gonna be like very well no one, like known cozy fantasies because I have yet to really dip my toes into that world other than The House in the Cerulean Sea, but I am ready. And the first one is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which I believe is exactly as it sounds. We're following Emily Wilde who has an encyclopedia of, of fairies. Emily Wilde is not good at people. She prefers the company of her books and her dog Shadow. God, I could, I could not relate to Emily Wilde any more than I do at this moment. Oh, we have a dashing and insufferably handsome academic rival, Wendell Bembleby. Come on, okay. So we've got like, and not like rivals to lovers, possibly vibes. And she is like the scholar and expert on fairies. And she's like, listen, okay, I've got a lot going on here. I don't need you. I just need my books and my dog and I'm coming back to this town, but like, I don't socialize, okay? Me and my fairies and my dog, we're good. But is that gonna happen? Probably not. I'm already really excited to read that. Okay, that, okay, I will give it to you. Okay, this synopsis made me even more excited. Look at that, eat my words. 
I want to continue on with this love of TJ Klune that I discovered under the whispering door. I actually got this. This has like such a special place in my heart because my local book club that I really love does book exchanges like quarterly or once every once in a while. And last winter for like the Christmas book exchange, this is the one that I got. And in it, there was like this sweet note about how this was like her favorite book of all time. And that was all I really needed to know in order to decide that I was gonna love it. And I'd already, I already owned The House in the Cerulean Sea and I was pretty sure I was gonna love it and I was correct. And I've had a few of you recommend this to me. So I feel like this is gonna give me that same cozy, warm, comforting vibes, but I'm not going into it expecting the same level of like in greatness, incredibleness, because I wanna give this a fair chance. I believe our main character might've like died and they're given a week to pass on but I think during that week, they kind of discover what it means to be alive and like what it means to make meaning. And that just sounds like the cozy fantasy vibes that I need. Then we have Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I own this on my Kindle. And I, again, I bought this when it was like $1.99 randomly on like the Kindle daily deals deal day. And all I know about this is that our main character has half a soul. And because of that, I think that like it makes it harder for her to feel things or like to feel fully human. And maybe she goes on a journey discovering what that is. Maybe not at all. Maybe I'm completely lying to you. But I've heard like nothing but amazing things about this. I don't think anyone who I've watched who's read this book hasn't liked it. I could be wrong, but I believe that it's part of like a series. It is Regency Fairy Tales. So our main girl, Theodora, has no sense of fear or embarrassment, a condition which makes her prone to accidental scandal. We love a woman who is scandalous, mm, but she doesn't want to be scandalous. She just wants to be quiet and sensible, but she just keeps getting into trouble. What a vibe. Magical version of Regency England. Normally not my thing, but I think it's going to work with this. And last but not least, we have a book that I have been saying that I want to read that also falls under this umbrella category of I own the book and then I also own a special edition of the book, even though I haven't read it, just because I assume that I'm going to love it. And that is obviously Legends and Lattes. I think that the companion novel to this or the prequel to it comes out soon or is already out. So I need to read this so I can fall in love with it like everyone else does. And I've been saving this because I have this idea. Feel free to steal it. That's fine because I haven't done it yet, but I, I might during the fall. It might be the right time where I read, I read books about like set in coffee shops or about coffee shops in coffee shop. But here's the thing is that I, despite the fact that I have been doing social media for a living for three years, I hate filming in public. I had to do it once in a coffee shop. I was not a fan. So it would just be like B-roll of me trying it. Like I thought, and then I thought maybe I could like try out different local coffee shops and like just get some B-roll footage of like me reading and then come back to you and talk to, to you about the books. Am I actually gonna do that? I don't know, but if I do, the, the reason I haven't read this yet is because I had that idea in mind for that vlog. We'll see if it ends up coming to fruition, but I would like for it to come to fruition during the fall before it starts to get cold here and I don't wanna leave the house and I don't wanna trudge through all of the ice and shit. So. Anyway, uh, that is not what this book is about at all. High fantasy, low stakes, although I feel like there are stakes because you end up loving the characters and it's a very character-based, kind of like slower story, which, come on, that's, that's me, that's my vibe. I literally was just editing my video the other day and I was like, Lexa, stop fucking moving. Stop moving the book around. Stop touching your hair, stop moving. And what have I done this entire video? We're all doing our best here, okay? Our main character opens a coffee shop because they like don't exist or they don't exist in this town. And she's like, I love coffee. I want to introduce it. And we've got like a bunch of different magical characters and she's introducing these magical characters to coffee, helping them learn to love it. And we just get like the vibes of her like setting up this coffee shop and it's slow, beautiful. And I think we've got a sapphic love story. Oh yes, because Viv, our main character, used to be like a fighter or an assassin or something like that. And she's like, okay, I've had enough of that. It's been a long life. That was real, it was fun, wasn't real fun. She's in her soft girl era, okay? We love to see it. And she's like, I just wanna own a coffee shop. So that's what she's gonna do. And I love that journey for her. We made it to the end. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave me a little leaf emoji, like a fall leaf. Do you know what one should do? Make sure that these uh, emojis exist because one time I told you to leave an emoji, I can't remember which one it was and it didn't actually exist. Yes, they do. They have like fall -y looking leaves. Leave that in the comments down below if you made it all the way to this end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any fall recommendations, anything that you have like already read or you want to read for fall, I, I am here. I want to remember this fall. Okay? I want to take advantage of the fall vibes. So please let me know down in the comments below and I will see you all next time.